Well, happy weekend, folks. Uh, thank you for hanging out with me for just a couple minutes as we stay tuned in to what God is doing in and through the life of St. Paul's United Methodist Church. Uh, my name is Jeremy Knight, and I am honored to be the pastor here at St. Paul's. Uh, and thank you again for hanging out with us for just a couple minutes. Um, real quick, just thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, we have had tremendous support for two things we are doing uh, during the month of October. The first is uh, we are collecting items to pack flood buckets. Um, the actual packing of those items into the buckets will happen on Sunday the 20, is it the 22nd? Am I a moron? I think it's the 22nd um, that we're going to take care of all that. Um, many of you um, have agreed to to purchase some of those items, um, bring them here and drop them off when you come by during the week or on Sunday mornings. And many of you have already begun doing that. So thank you, thank you, thank you. We only have a few items left um, on the big board um, that Melinda Duby was so gracious to put together for us. And so um, if you are still want to be involved in that, there's still a little bit of time. You'll see on Sunday um, on the big board, there's just a couple more items that we need. It's mainly um, masks and gloves and things of that nature that go into that um, the flood buckets. And just as a reminder, if you are curious what a flood bucket is, um, it is a collection of really useful items uh, that the relief agency that we're connected to, the United Methodist Committee on Relief, um, keeps stockpiled to distribute um, after bad storms. And so they have kind of curated this really best practices, the most useful um, materials and 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 needs and so you pack, they're packed in a bucket that way they stay fresh and dry and they are um, taken to really storm ravaged areas and so uh, we want to do our part this hurricane season as we all know in florida the realities of tropical uh, weather and so we wanted to make sure that we did our part by packing some flood buckets this fall so thank you thank you thank you for participating and please come and help us pack those on the 22nd. That Sunday, we'll do it right after church, and we hope you'll be here. The second thing I'm very grateful for your participation is, many of you have already um, decided that you were going to help us supply candy for Trunk or Treat, which is happening on our campus in a couple of weeks. Uh, Trunk or Treat is going to happen Saturday afternoon, October the 28th, from 5 to 7 p.m. here on campus. And so thank you for those that have already purchased candy bags and brought and dropped it off here um, at the church. Um, if you can't help us out in that, we would love um, for your help with that. We usually have hundreds and hundreds of people on our grounds. Last year, we stopped counting and we got over 400 people. So, um, and the majority of those were children. So we have lots of candy that we need to be handing out to our neighbors. And so I pray that you will help us uh, take care of that. Um, there is some really important information in your newsletter. I'm not going to go through all of it, but that newsletter is emailed to you on Wednesdays. Lots of really good stuff there uh, about some groups that we have going on. Uh, there's a financial update that William Gellner shared um, during church last Sunday. I want to direct your attention to that if you are not aware of those realities. And um, in addition to supporting us at Trunk or Treat, we want you there. And so there's a QR code there um, in the newsletter, and that, that'll direct you of how to sign up and tell us that you're going to come and hang out with us. Um, hopefully you'll decorate your trunk and hand out candy and have a really good time uh, as we love and serve our neighbors here in the Ocala area. All right. Um, getting ready for worship this week. Um, I'm just giving you a heads up. Here's your disclaimer. Um, it's not a parental advisory ly lyric, but it is a disclaimer. Um, I'm going to do something a little bit different in the sermon this week. Um, and I hope uh, that you will tune in. Uh, whether you can't be here, uh, maybe you're out of town, I hope that you'll find us online. If you can be here, I pray that you do. Um, last week, uh, we talked during our worship about trust, about what does it mean to build trust. Uh, we looked at some, you know, secular research um, from Dr. Henry Cloud about the, the characteristics and things that um, have to be there for um, human relationships to, to build trust. And we took some of that data and we asked, well, what does it look like to build trust in, with God? Um, because we know that God is trustworthy. We know that on God's end, um, there is faithfulness and there is perfection. But on our end, um, we really struggle with trust. And so how do we build trust with God? How do we ask the questions and, and direct our attention to certain um, parts of our own spiritual journey so that that trust can be uh, further deepened? And so 
this Sunday, um, I'm going to tell you, um, not in its entirety because I'm not going to keep you all day, I'm going to tell you why I trust God. Um, so you're going to get to hear a lot of my story, um, not in um, severely graphic detail, but you'll get a sense of things about why um, I am who I am, about what has led me to this place, um, and it's a story about God's faithfulness. And because of that, that is um, one of the primary reasons why I trust God, because of what God has done in my life. And so you'll get to hear um, a big portion of my story, um, of God's testimony of grace in my life, and so I look forward to sharing uh, bits and pieces of that with you um, as we continue to refocus ourselves on the things that matter. Um, and right now, trust matters, right? Trust matters. Um, all too often, and I won't get on my soapbox too much on Sunday, or I won't get on it too much here in this video, but we have lots of people and lots of institutions, the church included, okay? Let's not paint a rosy picture where um, it would be inauthentic. Um, there are people that have let us down that have broken trust. Um, I myself um, know clergy people, pastors, leaders, ministers who have broken trust. Um, I, I've seen churches go astray. I've seen churches really um, do really harmful and hurtful things. And so I, I'm not ignorant of that. Uh, I know that that is the truth um, because we're human and we're broken and we're frail. And so um, I'm not sharing my story um, to try to make up or compensate for any of that. Uh, I'm going to share my story because it's my responsibility to share it so that you understand when I invite you as your pastor to trust God more deeply, I want you to know what makes me um, in my own heart want to trust God more deeply as well. And so um, I say all that just with a sense of hope and anticipation of this Sunday, um, knowing that God is going to show up um, and God is going to speak the way God normally speaks, which is very clear and loving and compassionate. Um, and I pray that we have the ears to hear. I pray that we have the hearts uh, to encounter. And I pray that we have the audacity uh, to leave um, our worship together more suited for the task of following Jesus in our world. All right? Have a wonderful weekend, friends. I can't wait to see you Sunday morning, 1030 a.m. here at St. Paul's in Ocala. And if you need to join us online, I'll pray you do that as well. All right? Grace and peace.